Hello and welcome to a fresh episode of Mojo Talk. My guest today is all of 25 and she's rocking the world with her powerful words. Her first book of poems sold over 3 million copies across the world and still counting and she's been on the New York Times bestseller list at least twice. Yes, I'm talking about Rupi Kaur. What does love look like? The therapist asks one week after the breakup. And I'm not sure how to answer her question except for the fact that I thought love looks so much like you. We love her. We love she can put my emotions in words, like which I cannot put myself. She talks about transient relationships. The fact that she delivers it through social media also makes it more accessible. It's because everybody's in pain now, you know, everybody wants to be healed. I think what Rupi Kaur is able to do is understand what we see as a formal language. And she's able to take uh, the sense of rebellion, the sense of the other, the sense of being young or what it means to being young, the sense of communicating in a language that reaches out directly to her generation. Clearly you're a rock star in India. I mean, look at the kind of crowds that showed up for your performance yesterday. Are you surprised by this kind of success? Ooh, what is it? I don't know. I mean, my first response to that is always, I don't know, because for me, I feel like I'm just doing something that I've always kind of done and now I'm so blessed to be able to do it on a stage and share with so many people. But I think maybe the magic, it's like I'm responding so honestly to myself about how I feel about certain things. And I think when you're honest with yourself and the thing that you're most honest about with yourself is what other people feel too. I was talking to a lot of young people, asking them what is it about your poetry that seems to be having a connection with them. Most of them told me that you write in their language. In fact, there was one young man who said something like, whenever I read Rupi's poems, it's almost like she's talking about something that's currently my state of mind. Yes. The one thing that everybody tells me whenever I'm doing a book signing is, you write, you write or you put words and things that I've always felt and I've always tried to describe but I just couldn't describe them but this poem, like you use the perfect words to describe it and the other thing they always say is like when I read this poem I suddenly was like whoa like how does she know about my life and I think because I'm so intense in how I write honestly about myself you know it reflects in how they feel about themselves in their lives. Who write about love? loss, angst, heartbreaks. Yeah, I think it's like I'm writing about feeling and experiencing what I'm experiencing, what my friends, what my family, you know, how they're seeing the world. And so naturally, young people, kind of like the people my age are going to be like, oh yeah, like we feel that too, like we're so similar. And so of course we're going to relate to similar things. So for me, like that concept that two of us or these two things are connected makes a lot of sense and perhaps it's like we found a certain language to do that in that we can understand and that we relate to um, because I mean love, loss, trauma, grief, mourning, those things expand through lifetimes and ages. Sadness and grief and anger, all those emotions kind of equalize all of us because the way we feel them is all the same. You know, why is your poetry so performance-based? Why do you feel the need to perform your poems instead of just recite them? I think that there is something great about the written word, but it comes to life on stage. And that's when you can really understand the impact of it or the meaning that the author had behind it. Why do you use performance? Why do you want to use the performance? Performance was actually the first place where I sort of use poetry. So way before I published my work or it was ever written down anywhere, it was always performance. I've been performing for the last like, nine, ten years. And I think it's there's something powerful about being on stage and using your voice and sharing it with people. That's so powerful. And then I only published it online for then only more people to have it because, you know, I can't be on every stage all the time. I wish. Um, but publishing it allowed the poems to be in so many spaces at once. And 
What would you say to your detractors who say that you're an Insta poet and therefore your poetry is not really poetry? I don't see how Instagram or social media has taken away from the art of poetry when actually social media has brought poetry into the hands of millions of people across the world and from millions, not millions of authors, but so many authors. Um, so it's helped to push poetry into people's hands who weren't even reading. And so I think that's absolutely fantastic. I think so many people have utilized this new thing, which is social media, to bring this traditional thing to life. How much of your success would you attribute to the social media? Uh, was helped sort of was a vehicle in terms of taking this thing I was already doing for years and then helping it transport quickly because the young people we use the internet yeah this entire earth could encompass all love represented as if this emotion that seven billion people tremble for would look like a five foot eleven medium-sized brown-skinned guy who likes eating frozen pizza for breakfast.